Welcome back to Book Buzzers. We are going to talk about The Forever War by Joe Haldeman. Let's get out of here. Ready for light speed? One, two, three! is a luminary in the genre of military sci-fi. In fact, he's, he's kind of the godfather of, of the field. I don't really count uh, Heinlein's Starship Troopers because it was, it was very much a different age. And Haldeman, um, his book Forever War established uh, an area of science fiction that you see now in gaming culture and the whole subgenre of, of war, military, sci-fi. He tackles the biggest questions, uh, the, the idea of, you know, what are we doing with war? Why are we going on, you know, why do we continue in this, in this behavior after millennia of failed wars and, and people giving up their lives and the sort of the pointless NUI of, of their existence? Um, he won, of course, the joint Hugo Nebula Prize for this book in 1975-76. And he is one of the handful of Hugo Nebula Prize winners who's done this twice. Uh, achieved a double-double. Um, and it was over the course of, God, what is it, 24 years. His, his first book was in 94, and then the next book where he also won the Hugo Nebula was in 98, uh, called Forever Peace. Uh, an extraordinary, extraordinary achievement by any measure. His biggest contribution, I guess, to sci-fi is the entire concept of time dilation and what space travel does to the people left on Earth versus the people traveling at relativistic speeds to light and also in this case, uh, what they call collapsars, which are the same thing as black holes. Uh, they use these gateways to, once again, get around the basic physics of being able to travel faster than light. Um, and the consequences for the people on the ships and back in Earth um, are quite profound, and, and I don't think anybody else has ever really touched upon that in a way that makes space war seem a lot less palatable than anybody would have thought, as if it wasn't, you know, dark and grim enough. Uh, everyone you know is dead by hundreds of years. You then get caught up in the dynamics of the people, the survivors on your ship, who are with you for a brief period of time, and then you get separated again, and then you're out of sync in time again with these people. Um, this war lasts for a thousand years, and in the end, there's no one left. Uh, it, it's it's not a very uh, happy, it's not a very happy or uplifting tale in that sense. But his point is, yeah, in the end, it was it was a pointless enterprise. So, definitely um, universal in that war is not something that achieves the goals that anyone ever wanted to. Our first category, the green riding lightsaber. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> for all of uh, Haldeman's brilliance, I'm gonna go with a three on the writing style. He he just doesn't really have much of a style. He's, he's very plain, plain Jane. Um, his, his strengths lie in other areas, so it's a three. Strangely enough, it's a rare feat where it's a product of a specific time and genre and the, the history of the moment, the Vietnam War, and you can tell he's a peacenik. And even though, I mean, this topic is universal, it's been written about forever, all of time, uh, it could only have been written 
by a veteran of the Vietnam War in the wake of the Vietnam War the way this book unfolds. Yet again, it retains a timeless, a universal element of war is hell. Uh, he, uh, he achieves that uh, I mean, better than War and Peace, I think, <laughs> which is a much, much, much more difficult book to read. Okay. For the blue lightsaber, the big idea, uh, he is going to land a big fat fiver, um, mainly with the number one, uh, really the killer idea of time dilation in space travel. And it's now, it's a common theme. Everybody does it. Everybody takes it into account. Um, he was really the first one to, to talk about that in a meaningful way. It sets, it sets up everything. Um, I mean, this cascading, never-ending shift in timelines. So, some of his other guesstimates for the future are also, they're, they're not entirely on the mark, but you can see they are going to be factors in the future. Okay, his sexual orientation, sexual mores, changing of sexes, these are all fluidic states now. Um, he anticipates this maybe not accurately, but, but he sees it's coming. Um, he sees the problems with changing governments and strategies in the course of the war while they're away and, you know, governments on Earth are evolving, stagnating, falling apart, whatnot. Um, he deals with uh, just really obvious problems that, you know, when the, the people who sent you to fight a thousand years ago when you get back, are these the same people that you were fighting for? Um, these are great ideas. They're really, they're, they're solid. And, oh, weapons. Uh, it's, it's an interesting idea that they keep, um, they, that is, the people from Earth, and the people they are fighting in space, um, keep advancing in weaponry while they're en route because the people are stationary at home and they're able to advance sciences where they're not doing any research and weapons research um, on their starships. So by the time they get somewhere, there's some new advanced weaponry that's been developed and, and they get wiped out and it goes back and forth. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's gonna happen, you know, in the future. I guarantee it. A five for the big idea. Finally, for the uh, most important red epic storytelling lightsaber, Haldeman uh, has such a, a neat trick for his pace and his storytelling. Um, it's somewhat epic. It bogs down a little bit when he gets into the nitty gritty of the jarhead grunt politics um, and, you know, how many different positions you can have sex in space. Uh, but this is easily mitigated by the fact that there are these literally massively shifting time periods throughout the book. So he keeps a marvelous pace. Uh, the ground is constantly shifting. And so you got to stay on your toes and you're engaged by the fact that he never changes. This guy is more or less the same guy. He keeps getting bumped up in ranks over the years when he wakes up. Um, but everything he is supposed to be defending as a soldier has changed. And it's, uh, so it's a really compelling storyline, absolute five. Uh, overall, um, for the purple lightsaber, it's a five. It's a classic in the genre. In many ways, it's, it's the standard for military sci-fi. Um, and you see influences in gaming culture and well, there's scores and scores of movies and other military sci-fi that follow in this giant's footsteps. Well, uh, give us thumbs up, all four. Subscribe below. Uh, today, or whichever time unit your planet uses.